Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland Love every racing moment Visit hri.ie And you're very welcome along this Friday afternoon to Friday Night Racing It's Jerry Gilroy and Johnny Ward together at last Johnny, how are you? It's uh, great to be here In yeah. the same room Yeah um, It's a bit weird Social distancing, yeah It kind of feels like I'm being interviewed But uh, yeah, it's great to be back um, Did you get the job? Do you think you're going to get the job? Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, going backwards, probably, to be <laughs> honest. Um, where will we be in five years? Hopefully this will all be over, because as we were discussing pre-show, um, it's still very, very difficult for elderly people and vulnerable people who just, nothing much has changed for them, really. And, uh, you know, I just hope the vaccine happens sooner or later, because normality would be nice. I think it's underrated. Yeah, or even uh, a, a new normal, which is taking all the good lessons that we've learned and uh, applying some of them to what comes next. I think there have been very many. I think a lot of people will have appreciated uh, what Ireland has to offer and exercise, uh, maybe growing your own veg, just doing stuff with nature, really. I think if we don't appreciate the climate right now, we probably never will. Yeah, as, as it slips away from us. Right, you are very welcome along to Friday Night Racing here on Off The Ball, brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie or follow the Twitter account at HRI Racing. Um, we are going to talk to a, a sensational young jockey in about 10 minutes' time. But before that, I want to do a quick preview of what's going on this weekend and to look back on Derby weekend last weekend. Did people expect Santiago to be the cream of the crop on the day, or what um, happened? Yeah, he was he was sent off favourite after his win at Royal Ascot, which was a very good performance. Um, he's a strange one because Aidan O'Brien, um, I think his legacy will be very intertwined with Galileo. If if Galileo didn't have Aidan O'Brien and if Aidan O'Brien didn't have Galileo, I think we'd be living in a different world. Um, and it's unusual to have a horse that isn't by Galileo winning the Derby for Aiden, and that was he's a horse by Authorised, who was a Derby winner himself, but hasn't really produced at stud. Um, he would have produced some very good uh, jumpers, but um, so he did a slightly unusual profile, but he's very straightforward. And Jamie Heffernan, I think he's forty eight this year. Um, and racing is an amazing game that he's arguably riding as as well, if not better than ever. He's just he's. You know, with the COVID situation, Ryan Moore hasn't been able to come over to ride anything. Not to mind, um, you know, good good maidens. So, Jamie Heffernan, who incidentally rides in England this weekend, it's the first time that we've we've had, uh, and we've an English horse running in Nace tomorrow. But Jamie Heffernan has kind of uh, made hay while Ryan Moore has been away, effectively. Rode an uncomplicated race. Um, the second horse, Tiger Moth, might improve past Santiago. Um, and, you know, sometimes you say the derby, uh, was, it wasn't a good derby. And in fairness, it didn't look a great derby. But they're they're very lightly raced horses and they might actually prove. It's kind of like, you know, over time, maybe we look on it a bit differently. But, but Aidan's domination of the race, I mean, half of his derby wins now, he's had the first three, um, which is really, really insane. You know, and I know people may be a little bit fretting about the O'Brien's uh, dynasty and all that, but I think we have to marvel in the, 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 the genius of these guys. And Aidan, he's, what is he, Aidan is 50, but he's, he's absolutely relentless. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to talk about this weekend as well and what's going on, um, because it's the Derby and the Oaks uh, cross-channel. If you want to get in touch with this, you can always get us on WhatsApp, 87 Nine one eighty one eighty is the number, and uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about our new app, which is shiny and a great bit of kit, and we're very proud of it. So all you got to do is uh, search for OTB Sports in the App Store, and you'll be able to download that and get all the latest racing information and all our if uh, racing is your thing, which I guess it will be watching Friday Night Racing. You can subscribe to all our podcasts as well uh, on that. And anytime we go live with a show, we'll ping you a message. If you turn on your notifications, or anytime we go live with a podcast that you are subscribed to, we'll ping you with a message as well. So remember to rate it in the App Store. Just search OTB Sports and you can uh, download it there. A busy weekend in England as well. We'll talk about some of the Irish racing a little bit later on when we come to your tip, but it's uh, not just the Derby weekend in England this weekend. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an absolute cracker. You know, Epsom is back and the fact that they have um, owners back racing as well as uh, another step in the process to towards normalisation. It's been tricky for owners on a couple of levels. One, they can't go racing and I know, um, you know, for some... Some of the more elderly owners maybe that have had, you know, the likes of uh, Jim Goff who's been involved with that sceptical, like had a favourite in a group one of Royal Ascot, to not be able to go racing has been a, a bit tough for, for them. But um, 
owners also have had to deal with lesser prize money because the betting shops have been closed and all that. So Epsom being back is, is a big deal. Um, we have cracking racing in, in Nace as well tomorrow. Bellew Sounds Festival is going on, unfortunately, without people there. Um, but with what's happened this season, Epsom now has the Oaks and the Derby, which would normally be run. The Oaks would normally be run today. Um, it's on the same day, so it's a strange situation, but a bonanza for punters, really, who, um, you know, they, they have a, a really, really good Epsom card and then into the Irish racing later in the evening as well. What about um, the, the derby? What do you like? It's very tricky. Um, 16 runners in the race, and, uh, like, it, both races are kind of reliant on a favourite staying the trip um, who's coming from the Guineas trip. Now, tomorrow, I think Aidan has has about six runners in the derby and I suppose the interesting one was Jockey Bookins because um, Mogul who was pretty disappointed in Royal Ascot he's been drawn low he's been drawn two now Epsom is very strange because normally if you're drawn low that's a positive but in Epsom the camber kind of hits them straight out of the gates over the derby trip and effectively they tack over to the other side so it's going to be a little bit tricky for uh, Ryan Moore who's obviously had a quite enough season with the Aidan O'Brien runners so he has to get the horse into a position where he's comfortable but um, you know the, the favourite for the race uh, is is a horse by Camelot who, who won the race before English King um, he's been drawn he's drawn low as well so it's going to be tricky for them and to be honest nearly anything could win the race it's really Really, really open and uh, much, I think, double the field of the Oaks, which is eight runners. Um, and even Porrick Beggy, who's obviously had a bit of previous in this race, put it mildly. Uh, he's a fascinating ride in Vatican City, who's um, basically from a family of milers, but ran really well in the Guineas. And I know a few judges fancy him. I just, I can't really see him getting the trip, but um, very, very open race. You'd want to be looking for your four each way places. Okay. Uh, Santiago didn't go, but there was speculation early in the week that they might supplement him. Um, is it disappointing he didn't go? Was it the right thing? Or like, what's this about? Why, yeah. What, what goes into making a decision like that? Well, it's this, it's a it's a crazy season, Ger. I mean, they've uh, it's kind of like playing football games one day after another and expecting it to be all right. You know, horses are generally shouldn't be run uh, um, in quick succession, ideally. But Aidan O'Brien is just everyone has had to abandon the rule book because the, the, in order to make the race program as normal as possible, they had to kind of abbreviate the start of the season so that normality could resume as quickly as possible, which meant that Santiago ran at Royal Ascot and in the Irish Derby in quick succession. Now, to run him in the Derby again, first of all, I don't think he'd be good enough. And thirdly, it would be asking an awful lot of a horse. I remember Jim Bulger with Finch Gale Bio. She came within a short head of winning the French, Irish and English 1,000 guineas, which was incredible. But Jim would be a bit of an outlier in many respects. And as much as Aidan O'Brien was a former pupil of Jim's, um, I don't think he was ever going to do that. OK, so it just it didn't work out and it's too quick. And you say, interestingly, you don't think good enough to win. I don't know. I think there's more depth to this race. You know, there's, you have the guineas winner um, in Cameco, who most of every chance to stay in. He's very straightforward. English King has looked, uh, you know, he won his trial pretty easily. Uh, he's very lightly raced. He'll definitely get get the trip. Russian Emperor for me is progressing nicely. He ran really nice race at Royal Ascot. I, you know, the Irish Derby actually had a bigger field than this. It was I think it was the biggest field since the seventies. But I mean, there are a lot of horses there, sort of making up the numbers. And traditionally, this is a better race, and it is a better race this year. I don't think there's any doubt about that. All right. If anybody wants to get in touch, you can uh, leave a comment wherever you're watching this. Just in case you're unaware, we actually stream this on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Twitter simultaneously. And of course, if you listen to us on the radio and you talk every Friday evening from eight o'clock, then you feel uh, feel free to send in a text. 53106 is the number, or you can WhatsApp us on 0879-180-180. Now, our guest this week is 17-year-old apprentice jockey Dylan Brown McMonagall, who had a sensational uh, derby weekend last weekend. Uh, Dylan, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks for taking the call. No problem at all. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're riding high at the moment. How's it going? Uh, good, yeah. Not too bad at all. I was three rides today in Navin, so looking forward to it. So tell us a little bit about last week. You won the Extra.ie Apprentice Derby on Tonkinese for Joseph O'Brien. Yeah, um, it was a big weekend. It's all it's a, it's a race that all apprentices kind of look forward to during the year, and I was just privileged to be on a good horse, and I was lucky enough to win it. Thank God, and it, it worked out well. How much of your claim? I'm, I'm, I, listen to me now, like I know exactly how this works. But how much of your claim have you managed to ride out so far? Um, well, I think you have to ride like 95 winners to ride out your claim, or in around that. Anyway. And I have seven winners rode so far, so. I've a long way to go yet, but uh, it's going good at the minute, and the, I'm very happy that Joseph's given me loads of opportunities and I'm getting plenty of rides. So, 
It's it's one of these things for punters, Jura, that um, you, you want to identify a good jockey early um, and realise that like Dylan claiming seven pounds is a massive asset in in a lot of these tight races, and people have latched on to him. And in fairness, the Apprentice Derby is one of these uh, races I think that really puts you on the map as an apprentice. Not that Dylan needed that, but there's a, I, I actually have a bit a bit of a story behind this horse, Dylan, because uh, my friend Adam Potts actually procured him, and uh, Adam would fancy himself as a bit of a bloodstock agent. Um, but I think he was getting a small bit frustrated with him and he wasn't sure he was going to put his head down for Dylan in the closing stages because he was out wide. But he actually looked genuine enough on the day for you. Yeah, in fairness, um, he's a tricky horse to win with. But I rode him a few times during the winter in Dundalk and I think it was I was third on him in Dundalk one of the nights and that was as close as I got. But it's, the main thing about him was just getting him travelling and getting him relaxed. And in fairness, turning into the straight, he was running away with me. And when he needed to dig deep, he did. And... I was just delighted to get up on the line. The funny thing as well is he's owned by Syndicates Racing, which is a new thing that Jack Cantillon has put together. Jack's a very promising young kid from a racing family, but there would have been a major crowd of them there, like the current Derby weekend. What was that like, Dylan, obviously? Because you, you would have been probably on shoulder high uh, if it had been a normal weekend. I'd say that, yeah. There's there's a lot of the lads in the, in the Syndicates, and it's, just, it's great to, that everyone got involved and... There's more numbers being added into the syndicate at the minute, and I just seen they bought another breeze up in the sale there. It's going to Joseph O'Brien's by No Nine Ever, and it was the fastest breeze breeze up the of the sales as well. So they're buying plenty of horses, and they're a big syndicate to look out for. How many? Joseph must have about seventeen thousand in training now, so is he? <laughs> we're full up at the minute. There's loads of horses there, so we're kept busy. You're full time there, right? Is that, that yeah, a, yeah? Yeah, I am. Yeah. How long are you there now? Um, I've gone there now since we finished school at the start of COVID-19. Right. So, you so were... I think I've been down there around 16 weeks. Right. You're still in school then, obviously. Is there is the plan to finish it out? I did. I did my leaving start this year and I got the prediction grade. So I'm not sure how I got on yet, but we have to find out. And what was that like? It's just a matter of interest because um, cause my wife is a teacher who was doing the predicted grades and it was not easy on the teacher's side. There's kind of this painstaking, you're, you're fully aware that you're now responsible for uh, grades for the kids that they're going to have forever, essentially, uh, unless they repeat. What was it like from your side? Uh, well, in fairness, it was very good because if I, if I had had to fin finish out the full year of school, I would have been missing a lot of the flat racing. So it worked out well on my behalf and <laughs> I was delighted. I was delighted. <laughs> you're, like, the way it on. Out. you're like one of the few people who were actually delighted with the way the whole thing worked. Yeah, I was over the moon when I heard that we didn't have to do an exam <laughs> and we're finished. Student wholly endorses predictive grading. Yeah, well, that's you know, fair play to you, Dylan. There's no point, in, no point dancing around it. And was it always the plan to go to Joseph's? Like, have you known for a while that that was where you were going to end up whenever you were finished your leaving? Nah, uh, well, just midway through my last year pony racing, uh, I decided I would go down and take my license out. And sure, I grabbed it by the horn and I went for it. And I thank God it worked out well and everything's going good so far. And the link up with Joseph specifically, how did that come about? Uh, well, the, Joseph kind of contacted me mid through season last year when I was riding pony racing, and he just asked me would I like to come down, and I said of course I would, and he couldn't t he couldn't uh, not take the opportunity. That that doesn't normally happen. It's I think it's a bit needless to say normally you're a kid. Um, Kieran Fallon I think wrote letters to trainers. You know he was a wild kid from Clare, and Kevin Prendergast who's a a, re a real man of the people, Kevin, would always try to give kids a chance and he'd keep horses specifically for them, but trainers like Joseph O'Brien actually looking to get you signed up is, is, a, is very unusual. I think it's a little bit telling. Yeah, and, and I guess it's also one of the things that might separate Joseph as well, is that like he sees that there's an opportunity here to get the very best very early on in their careers and turn them into exactly what you want Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. Like Jack Kennedy would have ridden... Um, when he was 16, his first ride, he rode a favourite, which was very unusual. But he'd come from the pony circuit as well. And Dylan's story is going to be interesting because there are a lot of Donegal jockeys out there now. And if you're from Donegal, your nearest racetrack um, is Sligo. And after that, I presume it's Down Royal or whatever. But you're basically in a complete race in backwater in terms of racetracks. But pony racing is actually very, very strong up there with all the beaches and so on. Tell us a bit yeah. about... Go on, yeah. Sorry, go on. Where, where did yeah. you? Where do you do pony racing in Donegal? Uh, there's... There's fields everywhere. We mostly, mostly in uh, just around the outskirts in the countryside. If we get a field anywhere at all, really. Um, but we travel all around the country. Anywhere there's racing, we would travel. But mainly, if it was in the north, we'd stay in the north. But 
You sure. can't actually yeah. see our... Uh, you can't see our producer, our producer Enda here, but he's just smiling wistfully in the background, thinking of his beloved Donegal. Oh yeah, we're, we're surrounded by the Donegal Mafia today. Come here though, are your, are your folks into racing? Are you from a racing family? Uh, well, my uncle Adrian Brown, he, he had a lot of pony racing horses, so when I grew up, uh, mum and dad and everyone was kind of really into horses and I just started off riding ponies and then Adrian got me into the pony racing and my uncle Hugh as well, he was a massive help when I was younger and got me going and it really just started there and as soon as I kind of got the buzz for it, I just, that's all I wanted to be ever since. And what age were you when you got up on a pony first? Uh, I rode my first pony racing winner when I was nine. Right, so from that stage you always had a bit of talent. You must have known before that though, like, like, when's the very first time you get on a pony? Uh, I'd say it was about three. Right, okay. Mm. So it's Did it win? Uh, <laughs> no, I was just around the field getting used to it. Still won there. So nine is your first one, but 12 is the big breakthrough, I think. Like, it, it's funny talking about a 12-year-old having a big breakthrough, but here we are, you know, five years later, uh, you're winning on Derby weekend, but you're 12 when you win the Dingle Derby, which I think is a fairly remarkable achievement. Yeah, well, it's it's, uh, it's the Cheltenham of Pony Race and Dingle, and uh, I was just I was very grateful that I could win it at 12. So it's not very easy. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity that you get, and I was delighted I got it. How far? How long did it take you to get to Dingle from your neck of the woods? Uh, I'd say we got to seven or eight hours anyway in the Laurie Wood. <laughs> and uh, who was riding in the race as well, or who was riding that day? Do you remember that has gone on to? Not many your age, obviously. There are probably a few elder pony riders that day who've gone on to the track. Um, yeah, there's a few. Evan Daly, he was uh, he finished second to me in the Dingle Derby, and there's a there's a few lads. I'm not really 100 percent sure. Um, there's a fair few now. The, the biggest end of them is all kind of on the track. Danny she rode in the Dingle Derby that year. Luke McAdear, Donny Gallman, they were all in it. Um, there was plenty of us. Now, it's a big deal to be 12 to be winning the Dingle Derby, and this is back in, in 2015, but I think the other thing that happens around this time is that um, somebody makes a film about that. Is it about that race, or is it about you participating in the race? Yeah, well, when I won the Derby, uh, just just go direct from England, contacted me and asked would they would they be able to take a, do a documentary on me, and they followed me down two or three weeks later. And went to Glen Bay, and they took a video, a few uh, few videos off me over a few days, and they put a video together, and they named the Five Stone Lead, and I kind of they put it up on YouTube then, or on their own website, and I kind of got loads of views, and so they really put your name out there when it was so good as well, and it was very well done. Well, I mean, there's two sides to that. One, it's great to have the exposure, but you have to be good. You've got to back it up. Like so, there comes a little bit of pressure with the fact that this production company are, are making. Uh, a film about you, which ultimately ends up being seen by British racing aristocracy, the Baldings watch it, and ultimately then Tony McCoy sees it. What happened then? Yeah, well, as soon as AP seen it, he uh, contacted my mum and uh, Chanel sent my mum an email to, to ask me over for a few days, and mum kept it a secret then for Christmas, so when I got the letter Christmas time, I found out then that I was going to be going over to AP, so it was like, over the moon then, and I've been over there a few times since, and it's an unbelievable experience over there. So I was just very, I was very grateful for so, it. So if, if, if Tony McCoy's inviting you over to his gaff, Joseph O'Brien is asking you to work for him, so I'll just turn down the Pope in a month's time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was very lucky to have... Uh, you haven't changed at all. Yeah, I've had lo loads of good horses to ride, and that was uh, most of them were steering jobs, so... It made my my job a lot easier. I, I guess your parents must be a big influence because to uh, to be the subject of something like that at 12 years of age is, isn't is an easy, isn't necessarily a, a straight yes or no answer for parents because obviously um, they don't want to put too much pressure on you, but um, they've obviously been a big influence. Oh, without a doubt, they've been massive help, mum and dad and my sister Arda as well and all my uncles and aunties and my cousins, like the whole family has been very helpful and they've drove me up and down the country all my life so far and I couldn't be more thankful for it. That's the thing as well, Gerald, because like, we've had a few jockeys on here, the drive and, you know, I think it was, uh, it was Jack Kennedy actually, that, you know, when he, so Jack is obviously in Dingle, but so the, like a lot of the racing is obviously up the north, so the, the hours that they put in, mm. in the background, they don't ask for any thanks and they just invest in their kids and um, it's great to see that, you know, I think 
you know, kids are the product of the way they were brought up, really, and that that's why Dylan's prospering, I think. A hundred percent. And um, Dylan, in terms of the relationship with Tony McCoy, do you ask him for advice? Does it just kind of come out in, in dribs and drabs? How does it actually work? What like? It, it must be incredibly useful to have somebody at the end of the phone if you need them. But what 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 kind of advice has he given you that stuck with you? Uh, yeah, well, when I when I went over to AFAs, I kind of asked him for advice where to go, and I was saying I was chatting about going to Joseph's, and he he totally agreed with it. And like big big uh, decisions like that, you, when you have a big name behind you like that supports you, it's a massive help knowing that you have it in the back of your mind. He's also a a workaholic and somebody who's compulsively interested in getting better all the time. Like the photograph that we we put up a couple of photographs here while you've been chatting to us on the phone and there's one of the two of you having dinner and you know it's obviously a very healthy dinner that he's having. Um I think it might be an omelette and some salad. And like for you as a young jockey who at some point is gonna have to be aware of your weight and your nutrition and all that kind of stuff, it's not a bad thing to be aware of very early doors to be looking at this ultimate champion and seeing how he conducts himself. Exactly, and yeah. like the the nutrition part of the of the jockey life is very important, and you have to kind of be as light as you can, and you have to be very dedicated as well. But when you have like APs and Idol, when you look up to him and you see everything he's done over the years and the pain he's been through, like it all pays off. And end up. I couldn't help but help think of Johnny Murch as well because Dylan and him have a similar background from the boxing game. And Dylan, you were actually a, a very adept young boxer. It, was, it sounds like a career that you could have possibly pursued. Uh, we have a photo of you there winning um, Northwest Zone Championships. Yeah, the Northwest Zone Championships. You're, you're, I, I guess you're about maybe nine or ten in that photo. But uh, what was your boxing background? Uh, well, when I was in primary school, I just really wanted to stay fit and. One of my good friends at home called Paddy McShane. He was in the same primary school as me, and uh, I went boxing with him one night, and it just clicked from there. And I've uh, I started fighting then, and I won a few championships, and um, I went on. I won five or six Ulster titles, I think, and I won an Irish title there two years ago. So time's flying since then, but it was uh, it was very good to keep my weight down from a young age and keep fit. Well, that's the thing, because, I mean, anyone who does it says, like, uh, I know, Jerry, you're training for various things at the moment, but I think boxing is probably another level altogether in terms of... Yeah, no thanks. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's wouldn't too, be for me. Too tricky. Uh, the other thing is people actually hit you. That's yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, I'm training to... Grand, it's they're getting punched in the nose. Yeah, Gary Doyle was on a podcast during the week, the journalist, he was on about the time he, he fought Michael Carruth and he basically just knocked him out within a couple of seconds. But fitness-wise, Dylan, uh, I don't know if you're you're going to fight Michael Carruth, but fitness-wise, it must be brilliant for your, for your uh, jockey career as well. No, it was out of doubt. Like, you... You'd be going running there every day and you only think you're fit, but mm. the second you walk into the boxing club and you start training, it just it's a whole level, different level. Was there a choice to be made at any stage? I mean, you said that obviously from the time you were a kid and you got on a pony, you're like, this is what I want to do. But when you get good at boxing and you're winning the national title, are you thinking, actually, this could be kind of cool too? Or was it just another thing you were doing to try and be a better jockey? Yeah, that's all. It was only it was only second reserve to racing all the time and I always knew I was going to be a rider if I could and the boxing was always second best. Dylan, in terms of like getting better as a jockey, what do you do and how do you, how do you go about that? Because like, obviously there's no cheating experience and you're going to have to ride and ride and ride and experience defeat and experience victory and, and learn how to deal with that. Um, you know, There'll be a slump at some stage because there is for everybody and then there'll be a period where you're winning absolutely everything you're on and you'll have to deal with that. But how do you actually now, as, as somebody who's setting out properly full-time into this career, get better every day that you're at, at uh, just riding out and at the racetrack? Yeah, well, it's all just about asking for advice, and I'm very grateful. I have loads of people to support me behind my back, and anytime you make a mistake, at least you, they're always there to let you know if you made a mistake, and sure, you just have to you just have to get better and improve your mistakes, and it's all about experience and end up. Well, you've already had uh, 75 rides, which is a, an incredible amount, really, in a short space of time. I know, I know with, um, you know, just looking there, you've been ridden for the the likes of Mark Fahey, uh, Andrew Kinsler, Johnny Fien, Sarah Lynham. Um, sh actually, you've ridden for, like, seven different trainers, I think, in your last seven rides. Now, could I ask you about that? Because, obviously, a lot of trainers want to protect their apprentice, A, for the good of the apprentice's um, development, and B, to protect your claim so that, you know they can use you kind of um, to the best advantage. So how is that working with Joseph? Because he's obviously quite um, happy to let you ride away as you did in Sligo last night. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's great to get outside rides as well and get loads of contacts. But uh, 
yeah, Joseph's been very good to us, and he's been letting us ride for whoever we want, really, since the grass started. But uh, Kevin Ryan's my agent as well, and he's doing a great job getting loads outside rides. But when Joseph has a runner and he wants us to ride it, we're glad to get the leg up as well. What, what age are you now? Uh, 17. So it, it is important that, um, I, I suppose, like Blackburn winning the Premier League back in the day, that you don't necessarily peak too early that you, your, your development is kind of quite um, staged so is, is Joseph good in that regard as well because obviously you're surrounded by some great people down in owning there oh yeah without a doubt there's loads of help and he's a, he's a very good boss and he's very fair as well there's, there's plenty of apprentices down there and we're all getting nearly equal opportunities and so we're just very grateful for all the rides he gives us um, uh, Dylan wasn't born when Blackburn won the Premier League and he's like what is Johnny talking about <laughs> That's that's not only was he not born. I think he wasn't born for another eight years, maybe. About that, yeah. yeah. You were in the you were in the British Racing School as well, um, Dylan. Is that kind of the equivalent of the race academy here? Yeah, it's much the same. I got a scholarship uh, for a week, so I, I went over there for a week and I learned loads over in the British Racing School and it's great facilities. And I'd advise anyone who ever got a chance to go over to go for it. And I learned loads when I was over there, so it was a massive help as well. And is that kind of part of your future as well, kind of continuing that stuff? Because we, we've had people on from the academy at, at various stages and they teach you about nutrition, they teach you about sports psychology, teach you about fitness and, and balance and all that kind of stuff. Do you feel like you'll get all that just on the job working and racing or will you at some point, do you think, dip back into that kind of stuff in a, in a more formal, educational way? Uh, yeah, maybe not, but at least it's, it's always there for you if you ever do you need to go back and get them if you like if the, you ever need advice or you need help out like they're always there for you yeah for sure and you've got uh, you said you've got three races this evening um and uh any any chance for any of those three um all right edification in the premier handicap uh later on for mark fahey he won the last day in the car so the ground might be gone a bit soft for him but hopefully it runs well and i have two more then in each divide of the apprentice race i've won for tony martin and i've won for dermot anthony mclaughlin um, I won on Crafty Hugo uh, during the winter for Gary O'Brien as well so hopefully he can roll back his form and he might run well and are, is is there a crack with the other apprentices is, is it at that stage where you all kind of feel like you can relax like on the world yeah, yeah yeah or is it everybody just a little bit kind of still quiet and and trying to make sure that they're not putting their heads up above the parapet just yet no we're all good friends and we get on well so it's it's fairly good crack when we're in the wire room there, but it's just it's a pity the the racing isn't back to normal again and the crowds aren't about it's not just the same buzz, but we all get on well and there's no one there's no one uh, that doesn't get on with each other. Who who do you look up to? Because I just looking at edification, obviously you rode him two runs back, but when he was ridden at the Curra by Gavin Ryan, um, you might remember Jared Gavin featured in our three jockeys doing the leaving certs. Oh yeah, um, which, I, which I was I was remember during the week, Dylan, because uh, I do remember Ben Cohn. This was uh, this was I think the Thursday of the week, Wednesday or Thursday. There was a Fairy House meet on the leaving cert was starting the following week, but Ben didn't know which day he was actually starting the leaving cert a week beforehand, and I was like, well, at the very least, put your name down on the on the old, uh, you know, the, the leaving cert form because you're that laid back about it. He ended up actually getting a very good leaving cert, but um, the Gavin Gavin gave this horse an absolute screamer of a ride at Curra the last year. So who who are you looking up to in terms of those lads? Ah, uh, yeah, well, there's there's loads of good apprentices there at the minute, like Oshinari he's from Donegal, he's very good and. Ben Cohen flying at the minute. He has group, first group winner there in Leprosy on the last day. And Colin Keane, Shane Foley, Shamey Heffernan, they're all big. And sure, any one of, the, any one of them at all you look up to. And what, what are your own strengths, would you say, as a jockey? Uh, well, sure. I'm dedicated and I try hard, sure, and just keep the head down. It's rather modest, yeah. Yeah, is weight going to be an issue for you at any point? Or are you actually are you kind of the perfect size for being a jockey for the next 20 years? Uh, I am a small bit big, but my weight's good at the minute, and hopefully it can keep that way. That's about nutrition and training and, and being aware of exactly how you manage that, is it? Yeah, that's all, just trying to stay fit and eat as less as possible and just stay as light no, as no, you can. That's hard. That's, um, I, you lost me at that point, Dylan, I'm like... Uh, well, I, I think, in fairness, the, the likes of Dylan compared to Johnny Merton now would have an awful lot better chance because a lot of the jockeys just didn't... They weren't particularly well-educated on. Um, it's, it's, it's not... It's not and it's, it's, about, it's about what you do in terms of your gym work and your... Like, do you have any programme, uh, Dylan, outside of the track or, do you know, do you do, uh, do you do yoga, do you do Pilates, do you do gym work or, or is it all straightforward for you at this stage? 
No, we're very busy at the minute racing, so just whenever I really get an evening off or a chance to just go and go for a run or something and mm. try and stay as fit as you can when we get time. And Dylan, one, one last thing I kind of just trying to understand properly is apart from riding out in the mornings, what else do apprentices do around the yard? Because obviously it has to be, there's two ways, you're getting an education, you're getting opportunities to ride, but you, I suppose you kind of have to pull your weight as well. Yeah, exactly. We go in in the morning, we start at seven, we ride out four or five lots and we go home then for a break and get lunch and we head back in then in the evenings again and we brush down a few horses and stuff and rug them up and clean up the yard and just basic, basic stuff. The, the, you know, you, we've obviously known the story of the boot boys in, in, in professional football, that that's how you start off and it's a real... Uh, it's a real grounding, but I think racing's brilliant in that regard because the lad who won the Gold Cup the following day is literally just there the next morning with the with the young lads doing the sort of the dirty work, and it it's it it, it stops you I suppose getting ahead of yourself, Dylan as well. I mean I I don't know how you celebrate winning the Apprentice Derby, but you're probably back at work the next morning. Oh yeah, it's, it's just it's routine, isn't it? You just have to keep going. There's no breaks, and so that's just the life. You just get on with it and keep the head down and work hard as you can. What was your most uh, sorry? What was your most um, enjoyable win of the? What are we I'm looking at? My stats here. I think you're at seven wins. Would that be right? Yeah. Seven wins. So, what was your pick of the seven? Without a doubt, uh, my last winner mm. was the Apprentice Derby. Without a doubt. In fairness, I mentioned authorised. He's by authorised Tonkinese as well, but he's not a horse that's... He's not an easy ride, and I think Dylan getting him to win that race, we need the whole of the Curra straight to sort of think about what he was going to do. He... Uh, there probably wasn't much you could have done more, really. When you say not an easy ride, what do you mean? Well, he's he's tricky. Like I mean, he's 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 in races before. He's kind of looked half willing, and he looked like he kind of he's just a horse that wouldn't necessarily um, do what you want him to do at that moment. He probably thinks a bit about the game, and uh, I'm not sure what his background was. Sometimes horses, the way they're trained as well, they they might their minds. It, like if you're a lead horse for for other horses, you're you're literally there for people to pass you. So you can imagine, like if you're a cyclist in the Tour de France, and your job is domestique. Exactly, like well, it's, it's it's not necessarily going to make you, you know, the happiest kind of mentally in the world. And horses are like that. But Dylan, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you, it's probably right if you if you rode him again, you'd literally do the same thing. Oh yeah, without a doubt, we were drawn twenty one, so it was it wasn't easy getting across. But we we're lucky they went fast, and they got in and got a nice slot, and it all worked out well. Well, listen, it seems like it's all working out really well for you at the moment. I hope whatever your predicted grades are. They match the rest of the excitement of the summer that you're having and uh, best of luck with the rest of it. Great spending some time in your company. It's a great story. Thanks a million for joining us. Thanks a million for having me. Thank you. It's uh, Dylan Brown McMonagall there, J just, who is a rising star of the game. What a, what a kid. J just on that, now I, I, I haven't put much thought into this, but I presume there's a potential tendency for the, 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 the likes of your wife to, if there's, a, now, Johnny, if there's a doubt of one or two percent to go give them a little bit the benefit of the doubt because it's, it's an exceptional year. So you'd imagine as much as it's not ideal, hopefully the kids will get at least get the, the if it's a 50-50 ball, they get the break. But then, so no. No, because there's, there's no it doesn't matter because if everyone gets 5% extra... Then it's, it's a disaster. And so what, they, what the department did is they came in and they said, there's a curve that mm. you've, your schools have been on traditionally and you need to fulfil the criteria okay. of that curve. So Well, it's worked out all right for Dylan. Hopefully, yeah. 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 Friday Night Racing is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. It's time for us to get to that part of the show where we tell you what happened last week. Oh, did we have a winner, Johnny? Did we? Did we? Is, no, is, we there, is, there, is there an audio coming up here? <laughs> Sir Dragonet, Sir Dragonet um, was rather disappointing. Have to say, I enjoyed uh, watching the race. It was like old times. Um, a, a non, an unnamed bar in Dublin um, was was dispensing points. It's open. From, actually, I can't name it because it was it was the dame, but they they had this rule that you had you had to be more than a hundred meters from the pub, so to drink it. Yeah, which was let's just say it was the, the cops kind of had a <laughs> cops had an interesting job enforcing this, so they were kind of it was kind of yeah. like Del Boy looking for the cops in the market, like you know look for the the bowl of hats or whatever. But the cops, we we ended up having the crack with them, but part of the crack was watching the racing, and, and I thought Sir Dragonet was going to pay for a few beers in town and it was literally a few beers um, with a few mates but it wasn't to be I haven't given up on the horse but I know a lot have right so so Dragonet uh, finished second was it close? no it, it was second of three so he also finished second last if you want to look at it that way but he ultimately was Joseph had a horse in the race who was very progressive he made the running and he couldn't he just couldn't go past him despite the fact he was getting weight despite the fact he's an older horse um, 
but I would be very confident about this week's selection. Um, this is our tote Irish injured jockeys fun bet, I should tell you. This weekend, racing, as we've talked about, Nace, Bellustown, Cork and Fairy House. Well, obviously, at Epsom, there's no shortage of Irish interest lining up for the derby. Will this week's 100 euro tote charity bet be home or away? Uh, it'll be home. I should mention the, the Oaks as well, obviously. Um, we've Aidan has a very, very strong uh, hand in that. Um, I think Ennis Tymon could actually uh, upset the, 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 the hot favourite in the race. Um, she's a filly that has just progressed markedly. She ran an absolute blinder um, in Royal Ascot. She was behind Frankly Darling, who is by Frankel and Rhea poses. Obviously, Love, the well-named Love, is going to take an awful lot of beating. I think she should stay the trip, in which case she'll probably win. But Ennis Tymon, Shami Heffernan, I think is a great each way chance. That isn't my... Uh, um, bet of the weekend though my bet of the weekend is a horse who could uh, well end up actually running in the Irish Oaks and uh, that's in the Nace Oaks trial which is going to be it's the centrepiece of the card really at Nace an absolute cracker of a race and even so is actually running for Ger Lyons who obviously we had in the show recently before Don't fire, he, yeah. Ger's have I think Ger's strike rate as of the other day anyway was 26% Oof. which is a lot, that's absolutely bonkers in any event Laburnum is taken on even so on that 5.15 um, she looked like she needed the experience of Goran first time out when she beat a, a horse of Ger's I think she's potentially very very good and I think she'll win Okay, so this is the Irish Stallion Farms European Breeders Fund Nace Oaks Trial at 5.15 in Nace. Mm. And you say Laburnum. L Laburnum. Laburnum and even so. So even so ran in the Guineas and she ran a nice race. She's by Camelot, should improve. Laburnum's by Galileo is a certainty to improve uh, unless um, everything's gone mad. And I think she'd be an Irish Oaks filly. Um, and I'd imagine as much as she only met her debut a few weeks ago, it's that sort of season. She's Aidan has all these... Brilliant Galileo horses, and she's another of them, probably. So this is tomorrow, actually, and I don't see any prices up for any of this yet. So your 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 bet is Laburnum. I don't want to get this wrong. Um, or is your bet maybe even you so? do actually, but uh, my bet is Laburnum. Yeah, I think she's only she does have a bit to find to be uh, the favourite. I'll just see if they actually have betting here. I I I I did the race in the race and post. I'm I'm slightly speculating, but I think you might get two to one. Okay, maybe. Right. So Laburnum, and that is for the Tote Irish Injury Jockeys Fund which we didn't have a winner for last weekend, but we're going to try and get back to uh, winning ways because it is all for charity. And so we're trying to win some money for it. That's our strategy this year. We've, 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 uh, well, what, what, was the, what was the strategy up until now? Just try not wild. to win money for charity. Be, be wild. Do the Father Jack and try to avoid giving money to charity type thing. Because that wasn't my intention. Okay, so I mean, uh, unintentional, unintended consequences. The, mm. the law became evident very quickly after a while. Johnny, it's good to be back. It's good to be back, yeah. Is this the way it is going forward? Are we going to ease back into studio life again? Well, until, yeah. Mm. Until whatever happens. It's a strange office out there, it has to be said. It's just a lack of people and... It's Friday afternoon too though. Yeah, it is, it is. Friday Night Racing and Off the Ball is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every uh, racing moment. Visit hri.ie, I guess this week. That's a sensational career he has ahead of him. I, you just, it's like, um, who was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer on about his, the young kid up front? Um, 18 years of age, he's like, this lad is like me at that age, except he's only better. Uh, he's an amazing goal scorer. I can't... M much better. I can't think of his name, but... The, 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 was. the only thing you, you're afraid of is that... Mason this, Greenwood. Mason Greenwood, sorry. So the only thing you're afraid of is that this lad is so promising. Um, a lot of promising kids have, haven't gone on before, but he just... He, on the mental side of it, I didn't see any flaw there. And just like his trainer, massive humility, because you can... I would say this thing, if the one thing about jockeys at that age, particularly if they were based around the Curra, um, Kildare can be a, a, a tough enough town for kids to, to grow up in and they would basically go down the wrong road. And a lot of jockeys have done that. They've, they've basically not fulfilled their promise. He has everything going for him to do the opposite, I think. All right, good stuff, Johnny. Another Friday Night Racing is in the books. I hope you've enjoyed it. We broadcast live every Friday afternoon on uh, otbsports.com. And the best place to get us these days is actually our brand new app, which is uh, OTB Sports. Just search OTB Sports in the App Store and you'll get it there. We'll see you next Friday. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, hopefully with a winner in our back pocket too. Good luck. Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball. And they're Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie.